Welcome to the Power Platform Podcast with Microsoft BizApps MVPs Mark Christie and Ian Connolly. Join them as they talk to the community about their stories. So normally when we start these podcasts, we kind of go and say, this is the first podcast in like a week or two weeks. This is probably the first podcast in what? Eight, week, eight weeks? Eight months? Nine months? Ah, uh, this is like a, the first COVID podcast. Like, No, no, oh, we have. We did have talk. We? Yeah, we've done a couple and we didn't talk about them at all. We, we deferred the mention of that evil bastard word. Oh, that's because we were in denial, wasn't it? We were trying yeah. to pretend it didn't exist and we were going to come out the other side fine and nobody was going to have any issues or anything. Or it was only going to be a short space of time, but here we are. Nine months in, lockdown version 2.0, tier, I don't even know what tier of the wedding cake I'm in with COVID right now. It changes every other day right here. It's like when they changed NWO to the NWO Wolfpack. Is that, we're at that level now. <laughs> so that kind of subtly brings us into to where we're going and who we've got. So again, this is going to be a little bit different. We are going to talk wrestling with members of the community. So... From my screen, we'll kind of go from top left, just as a little intro so that people can can get a flavour of everyone who is here. So, Matt, do you want to start? Great. Starting, wonderful. Um, yeah, Matt, I'm Matt Beard. I am a uh, software developer uh, for a company called Data8, doing Power Platform stuff, um, doing a bunch of stuff with the Scottish Summit as well, uh, helping all that go on. Um, cool. And... I was impressed to find out there's other wrestling people within the same community. So it's always a nice to have a, uh, a common talking point to talk about. It is. And I, you get random messages from me with loads of wrestling crap that you're like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Paddy? Oh, what a rush. <laughs> there we go. That's it, right? <laughs> that's took every bit of self-confidence out of me now. That's me done. <laughs> but Woo! <laughs> Anything for a pop. Um, yeah, so I'm Perry Byrne, and uh, I'm a big wrestling fan. Uh, I'm a, also a Dynamics 365 consultant, uh, power platform consultant, functional consultant at Incremental. And um, yeah, just been loving wrestling all my life. Awesome. And next we have Mr. Dolman. Oh, thanks, guys, for inviting me to this. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, I think, the only one from across the pond on this particular podcast right now. I'm yep. living in Canada. I'm a power platform specialist. I'm a trainer. Um, I do a, a quite a bit of content uh, for a website called 365.training and do quite a bit of other speaking and blog writing, a um, bit of videos here and there. Um, so, yeah, you might have seen me or my stuff around the community. I do a podcast as well about Power Apps Portals. And in terms of professional wrestling, it's quite funny. I, I lately, last few years, I haven't been involved or is watching it as much. However, when I was sort of teenager in my 20s um, or even like as a kid or whatever. So I kind of grew up in the 80s. So, of course, right in that golden era of the WWF, the NWA and then into, you know, the 90s, uh, the ECW and all that other stuff. And probably in my 20s, at least every month, I was watching some show somewhere. Probably the biggest I've been to is WrestleMania 18 in Toronto, where there was like 80,000. And the smallest uh, show here, like across the river in Gatineau, Quebec, where there probably is like maybe, I don't know, 40 people and jumping off chairs and wrapping each other in barbed wire and all that kind of fun stuff. So seen it all <laughs> and uh and uh yeah trying to here and there I, I do kind of tune in and watch a few matches when i can see that's kind of my my style and i think ian kind of likes it as well as more the hardcore wrestling so yeah we've we've got the ecw stuff we've got ecw but our kind of local promotion is icw yep which is insane championship wrestling which was pretty much the Scottish version of ECW. So yeah, we yeah, the first thought ECW like, was when they were all it was all in like the community halls and stuff like that, just like your total low down, dirty wrestling. But was breaking out into the streets. There's like you if you YouTube it, ICW and Mary Hill where they're running up and down the main streets of Mary Hill, which is an area of Glasgow is probably wrestling most Friday nights <laughs> there on the streets anyway, but they it's, it's what out. it's what uh, we call church league wrestling here. 
Yeah. Bingo Hall. That is, isn't it, Natalie? Yeah, that's our, our local one. That's kind of where where we have been going. Or I mean, we've been to ICW, we've been to Progress, we've been to NXT and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it's good. So I'm going to pop off a few questions and just kind of randomly, more for talking points than anything else. So Paddy, what actually got you into wrestling in the first place? I can't remember what got me into wrestling. Um, okay, I was when I was very young. Got you into wrestling? <laughs> Jesus Christ, there's one way to start. I was very young. Uh, but probably if I could, it was the Ultimate Warrior. I seen I seen the Ultimate Warrior. I just thought, what is that? That's cool, as anything. Um, and not I don't think it's that cool now. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but I, I, it, that's the first thing I can really remember is seeing the Ultimate Warrior and just going, just that that music in that uh, entrance and going, I'm into this. But then as, as I think like a lot the the golden era, isn't it? It's the Ultimate Warrior, the Undertaker. Aye, and Hart, Hulk Hogan. Ah, uh, yes, I think it's just. It's, I mean, I was I, I probably like most wrestling fans. I was, and I still am into quite a lot of things Americana. And you get that with, with people that are wrestling over in the UK. They tend to like a lot of American stuff. And I liked a lot of American stuff when I was a kid. And I remember seeing Ultimate Warrior. And then um, I asked my dad to tape. Uh, his, his pal had a Sky, had Sky, so he taped a pay per view for me. It was the Royal Rumble with Ric Flair. Winning, and that was the first thing I really seen properly, and that was it. I just uh, it was Ultimate Warrior and Ric Flair all over my walls, bedroom walls for then on. Everybody else had Michael Jackson, and I had like <laughs> these men in pants. Was that so, the Royal Rumble that Flair came out with like the WCW belt on? It was the one that was the 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 one where he. I think it was only the second Rumble, ninety three, yeah. when he when he won the champ. No, he, he yeah, won the he championship. Yeah, he comes in first and then kind of wins the whole thing. I mean, spoiler, spoiler alert, like 30 years 92? ago. 92? Yeah. 92, 93, I think it was. 92. Uh, it's, 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 it's the 92, yeah. Yeah, and it's still to my, it's, it's my favourite Royal Rumble. Um, oh, that's where he came in at number three, isn't it? I think it was three, I. He came in at three and won it. And he won it. Uh, yeah, I remember, I remember watching that in a bar, actually, because so it goes to show my age a little bit. <laughs> So, well, yeah, because back uh, when I was going to school, they used to show the pay-per-views and bars. So we used to make sure we got there super early, um, ordering beer and wings. And, of course, we're students, right? So trying to nurse those out for as long as we possibly could, <laughs> um, stretch it out. And I remember I was a huge Ric Flair fan. Well, I still am a huge Ric Flair fan uh, right now. You can't, you know, the um you, you got to be the man or beat the man and he was a, and he's an absolute legend and i remember watching flair like in the mid 80s in the nwa uh, wrestling sting luger and and then of course moving on the big the big big shocker was when wcw didn't renew his contract and then he moved on to the wwf and then we thought we were going to see finally flair versus hogan and Vince McMahon completely shit the bed on that thing. I mean, that could have been a money maker for at least a year or two. Um, but you know, I, I digress. Yeah, it's that Royal Rumble, and he, you know, of course, I was a big Flair fan, and my friends were kind of bugging me about it. We see Flair come out like very early on, like you said, either the, the second or third, and like, oh yeah, there's no way he's gonna win. And then lasted right right to the end. And he cut a promo at the end. And you could tell legitimately he was very pleased with how everything kind of turned out. This was a it was a big moment for this guy. I mean, they did totally shit the bed with that. The same with Undertaker and Sting as well. They shit the bed with that one. Mm-hmm. Having them both in the same promotion at the same time. It was just, they totally missed missed out on that one. But yeah, the 92 Rumble. Jeez, I mean, you're, you are talking, what have you got, Steamboat at that point? The steam boat there at that point because they kind of yeah was there was cool. a lot of the the AWA and the NWA stuff with Steamboat and Flair, and then did they not have a tiny little run in WWE or WWF as well? Not not that I can recall. I I know I remember I remember the Steamboat Flair. I was like eighty nine, yeah, because um, that was a big deal as well. And I, that actually because Steamboat had been, you know, we think about WrestleMania three and his battle with Macho Man. Steamboat yeah. was a you know, a mainstream part of that WWF. And then he moved over to the NWA. And I think that shone the light on NWA quite a bit because at that time it was still kind of considered second and a lot of people weren't even aware of it. And then all of a sudden, you you know, you know, 
mainstream media was still having its little bit of a thumb or sports or about wrestling. They're talking about like Rick uh, Steamboat winning the world championship. And they're like, well, wait a minute, what is this all about? And then, yeah, so I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think uh, Steamboat and Flair fought in WWF after, but I could be wrong. The one thing I was going to say there is Rick Flair is on Cameo. You can have Rick Flair record a message for you for $500 now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So many times I've just been tempted to use Scottish Summit <laughs> budget for Ric Flair to say, oh, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's only so many people and they're probably on this call at the moment that would actually get a kick out of that. <laughs> well, and there's another population like, I would, I would love it. I'd get a ticket tomorrow. <laughs> Nobody even knows, right? So the Scottish Summit intro, like the tickets are now available. Paddy, do you recognise the voice on that? The voice, um, I don't recognise the voice, no, but you told me who it was. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> our, our re- we've got it's, a, it's someone from ICW, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the, he's the compere. Yeah, I've only, I've only been to one ICW show. Um, yeah. I'm kind of the opposite. I'm not any, really any blood and guts anymore. Um, it, it just, I don't know, just sits uneasy with me, knowing that it's just actual people hurting people. <laughs> <laughs> used to be in my 20s, I loved it, but I just, if I want to see People hurt people I watch the UFC. What was the show that you couldn't make, Mark, that I ended up going to with Graham? Oh, that was the one where it was the Mikey... No, was it Jimmy Havoc invitation? The Jimmy Havoc show. Uh, it was probably... It was, like, the best slash worst wrestling show I think I've been to for that. Like, proper blood and guts. It was proper barbed wire. Like, Ice Cool was there. Loads of independent wrestlers, like... And honest to God, the beating they were taking, I'm like, yep. man, this this is good because I'm wanting it, but at the same time, it's just bloodthirsty, right? Mm. It's it's cringeworthy when you're watching this because you realize you could actually see something go horribly wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and thankfully, other shows I've been to, I've not. I mean, you see a few injuries here and there, but nothing devastating. I think the big one of those, the hardest core show that I saw was in a bar in Guelph, Ontario. And it was like a da- it was a known it was called the palace I think it was like a known dance bar right so that's where you know the the kids would go and you know the dance club and whatever else so they had like go go dancers like stages in the corner of this of this big bar right so sure enough the wrestlers were like there was one where they're jumping off that you know and this had the barbed wire bats and everything like that but also they had as a special guest was the Iron Sheik and he did the uh, little baton uh, kind of routine where you get someone in the ring to try to you know try to get someone to do it and then screw up but man did he, you know he cut a promo and you could tell he had no good words to say about hulk hogan and i know mark you said i could swear on this but i can't even repeat that because the language is so vulgar iron sheep did not like hogan one bit <laughs> and of course this is like it's like 15 years after he lost the belt <laughs> Especially if you follow Sheik's Twitter. I know his Twitter account is mainly run by those two brothers that done the documentary on him, but some of the tweets that come out of that account are, are brutal. So, Matt, what's the first wrestling match that you ever remember? The, f- the first one that I remember, so I'm going to go the other way and I'll show my age going the other way, I'm afraid. Um, I always remember, so I got a call from a friend that said, I've just got a video, do you want to come and watch it? And I was 10 at the time. And it was 1998 King of the Ring. So it was Taken Mankind, Hell in the Cell, then Kane, Stone Cold, First Blood. And that was it. Like, I, I remember watching every second of that, like, so much. And then from then I went both ways, which was watch it live every time I possibly could. And then get every video you could from the store and rent the videos because no network at the time, right? Nothing like that. So it was get every video you could. And then just, and as I've got older, I've sort of gone back in time, watch it, and gone modern at the same time, sort of branching off from that 1998 point where I very first started. So um, just a little bit after the proper tape trading sort of days where you could buy a tape <laughs> at the back of a magazine. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. So there was, a, I had, a, I had a, a rental store just up the road from where I lived, and they would get the videos in because there was a group of about 10 of us that always would rent those videos. So they got them in just for our group and then moved them on. Um, so, yeah, back in the days of watching it all on VHS. And then DVDs came out, and I remember I got 
WrestleMania 2000 on DVD, which, if you remember, it was the four McMahons in each corner. Yeah. Um, and and it was the they had a hardcore battle royale where the hardcore belt changed on what unlimited times in thirty minutes or something. And I must have worn that DVD out, and that was where the love came into it. And then when I went to see it live, it put a whole new element on top of it again. Yeah. And I think when you were saying before about the violence and stuff, I think the fear of watching the violent stuff live makes me excited but scared because you're watching it live. That's when it can go wrong. Generally, if you're watching it on YouTube, you've gone there because you, someone's told you, so you know what <laughs> something bad's going to happen or something. Whereas the, the the excitement of seeing those, I mean, just wrestling in general, but then even the hardcore stuff live is another level because yeah, you've you know you don't know what's going to happen. No. Yeah, I think that's, that's probably the, that. the live hardcore stuff, definitely. Obviously, there's a lot of wrestling's like a dance to some extent, right? You don't always know what's going to happen, but there's an element where things are going to go a certain way. But well, with the hardcore stuff, I just don't think that it, it just you just don't know that's what's going to happen. No. Uh, so I've got an Sorry, on you, Nick. I was just going to talk about what Matt said about watching it live versus watching it on TV or something. I mean, that's something. When, you know, I grew up as a kid watching wrestling on TV and, you know, we lived in, I, I grew up in the, the backwoods of Ontario, so really didn't get, you know, out too much to the city or anything. Finally, it was like, you know, I first saw live wrestling. It was just, okay, this is, this is these people we see on TV. It's, it's well, it's a different, uh, different experience. And then you get to the point where you can actually, if you can get seats close enough to the ring and start trying to interact with the wrestlers as well <laughs> um that's always a blast and that buddy of mine my friend chris he's he's like the pro at it he can just say certain things and get a response out of these guys and of course if it's not being televised or taped or anything like that they'll the wrestlers will engage to a certain level with that and that's always the fun um but I think the the highlight in terms of a live wrestling show was, you know, Hacks on Jim Duggan. If you remember, you guys remember him. Maybe not Matt because he's still a baby, but uh, <laughs> he he always used to come up with a big, you know, U.S. American flag and USA, USA and all this. And uh, we were watching a match. He was wrestling Yokozuna, um, you know, big feud at the time. And, of course, Yokozuna had the Japanese uh, flag and all this stuff, stuff you can't get away with now. Um, just so it's so politically incorrect but of course they're wrestling in Canada right so I'm you know you guys know me I'm a very patriotic Canadian so I'm of course I brought my Canadian flag and I'm waving this because I'm like Duggan don't come in here waving your stars and stripes on <laughs> Canadian soil um, and uh, he actually he stopped saw my flag put down his American flag grabbed the Canadian flag and went into the ring with that so that to me was like that was one of my highlights in, in watching live and just sort of you know being able to interact with the with these live these guys live and i have a few other stories like that too but i'll uh, let you guys keep going ian have you ever taken a flying elbow from any wrestler <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and it wasn't matt yeah definitely that was a, a big beast of a guy for about six months i had an absolute so sore so so shoulder from catching ram ram um, from the audience because somebody flung him over the, the railings and he just wiped me out, like totally wiped me out. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> this boy's like eight foot tall compared to me. He's a giant. It doesn't matter what he's done. And I'm like, fuck me. <laughs> so crazy. I don't know if any of you remember, he was in he was in the NXT for a wee while, uh, Thomas Latimer, and then he was in TNA as Bram and he's like legit about six foot eight 280 pounds solid muscle and he just came like flying over and all you see is Ian boom jeez <laughs> like, I mean we've had loads I mean so I, I, the garage is progress like, is an interesting one as well because it actually is like the awesome. sort of the, the folk around the edge of the ring are coming around they're just getting you to jump out your chairs they're like you need to move now because somebody's coming yeah, and like, you just it's, you don't know if they're going to go or not but getting out your chair and all of that stuff well, and, I've, I've almost been killed by a guard right at least twice <laughs> that, that's part of the fun of sitting down the front as well isn't it like it you is. talk about the, the, the danger it's like yeah. I, I think that's when you know you're a fan when you go live because I've had people who went live and just went and who, who liked wrestling and went nah this isn't for me I can't hear the commentary blah 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 but that's when you, you, you know you're a fan when you go live and you get that 
you're on the edge because you're like something's going to smash me in in a minute. <laughs> and you have to get up in the chair to make space. Sort of. So I've you've been so Ian. I've never asked you this one. What was the first ever wrestling match that you watched? Though? I've never asked you that before. I don't. We've had that chat. I'm, I think I'm the same as Paddy. It's one of the really early Royal Rumbles, and it's from like a dodgy DVD recorded off a of Sky that done the rounds around like the school playground. Like not a DVD, a VHS. Like let's go back. I mean, it could even have been a Betamax. <laughs> nah, it's definitely a VHS. That's, that's but... <laughs> See, it's a throwback, right? It opens and up like that. Rather than come out, it comes up. <laughs> yeah, Betamax is actually better quality. They still use it in production. And, uh... That's what my parents kept telling me. They're like, that's better quality. But nobody's got any. <laughs> VHS was cheaper, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I think probably the same, like that Royal Rumble, like 92 period about that. And I remember being, I actually remember being at my mate's house and being devastated because the VHS got chewed and mid watching it. Yeah. And we're just like, no, rewind, play it, what? And then it got chewed because it just it just went nuts. But that sort of Legion of Doom era, Jake Snake Roberts, Big Boss Man, definitely all of that. And then I probably moved away from it, just never really kind of kept in touch with it. I never had Sky as a kid or anything, so never ever seen it. Yeah, that's similar to me. I missed probably when it was in its prime. So I've, I've always been a WWE guy. I never really watched ACW, uh, WCW or, N, or ECW. But I was in it when I was dead young. And then, you know, you, you grow older and you kind of you lose touch with it. And then I remember, but I always really liked it. I never had Sky. Even at uni, I didn't have a TV. And I remember, um, I, I, if I'd have seen someone written about it, I'd read about it. But I remember being in a pub one night and it was like a lock-in or something and, Hogan and the Rock was on TV, and I was like, "Oh, like you know, I couldn't believe it because I'd be so out for so long." And I was like, "What? Can you, I can't believe this is happening because I didn't even know it was a thing anymore." And I just that just hooked me again. I was like, "I need to check this out." And so I missed all that goal. I missed the attitude area essentially. I didn't watch during that time. Yeah. It was only after as I got back in it. Was that eighteen Hogan versus the Rock? That was WrestleMania eighteen in Toronto. I was there. I saw that live. Ah, oh, yeah. But I was, you know, the best seats. Like, this is the Sky Dome, right? So it was like, they were like this big, you know. But yeah, it was, that was, that was pretty cool because, of course, the whole crowd was, uh, you know, very pro rock. And then Hogan was the villain in that one. And, and it just, it was, you know, again, the magic of a live crowd. And all of a sudden, you kind of, you realize at the end, uh, um, it was Nash and Hall. Of course, I was the reinvigorated NWO that, and they kind of Hogan kind of turned on them and the whole crowd kind of flipped with them as well. And you got like that many people. It was just I don't know. It was just something even though this is it's 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 a drama. Right. And you kind of get washed up in this whole drama with that. And that was yeah, that was that was something. No, that's see, Matt. Right. So I'm going to go a bit weird. I can't remember the first wrestling match I ever watched. But the first thing that I can remember wrestling wise was Macho Man and Jake the Snake. Where Macho Man had his was basically up and tied up in the ropes, mm-hmm. and the snake bit his arm. That's the first thing that I ever remember about wrestling, and I don't remember matches, but that just. I think the main reason was because for like a whole two months they played that clip. When's Macho Man coming back? When's he coming back? I heard the backstory on that. They said uh, Jake Roberts actually had to get the snake. To yeah. bite his arm behind the skin yeah. before that happened because Macho Man didn't trust him. Yeah. Like, well, Jake, you're gonna get you better get that snake to bite you first because I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'll maybe do my Drew Galloway later on, but uh, we're gonna go down the uh, the wrestling the wrestling promos eventually. Oh yeah. So barber shot uh, window, still the best one. Yeah. Oh, that as well. Yep, yeah, I remember that one. See, see the, the Macho Man one, back to that, right? I, I remember seeing that loads and loads around about that time. But I didn't, I don't know how I could have ever seen it because I didn't have Sky. I didn't, I was kind of the only rest, I had a, f- a few pals that were in it, but I was only like a, one that really liked it at the time. Yeah. Everybody else was playing football stuff. So I don't know how I even saw that because there was no and internet YouTube to look at. Right? So it's not but really I, that easy access and on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how I seen it, but I just remember seeing that all the time and just thinking, wow, this is great. But I, can't, I don't know how I managed to get my hands on that content. Yeah. There's a well, there's a way, I suppose. See, I used to. I had Sky, but I never had Sky Sports, so I didn't get WWE. But if you watch the TNT movie channel 
on a Friday night, you would get Monday nights raw. And then that would finish at like 11 o'clock. Then I somehow stumbled across, if you went to the German channels at about 11 o'clock, <laughs> that you would then, <laughs> you would then why, get... Why was Burn looking at the German channels at around 11 o'clock? I have a theory, but let's move on. <laughs> I was trying to find where um, Thunder was. Oh, but yeah, thun- they basically, in the German channels, they would play Thunder from the Thursday before that on the on the German channels and it was great. You just kind of went all the way through. The adverts were interesting. I mean, it was like 10 minute free view, but it was good content. I mean, the Did you only of- find that when the clocks went back an hour because you tuned in an hour early? Oh, never went forward an hour, whatever way it is. I would stay up to watch the wrestling content. Did you used to get it on, we, so over here, we had Channel 4. I don't know if you have S4, or so whatever you've got, but they had the pay-per-views for a while. So I looked, like, we used to, so the night that they did the undisputed tournament and Jericho won the first ever undisputed where they combined the belts. Yeah. Like I remember staying up all night for that and watching that live on Channel Four for free. Um and I used to remember that yeah, that's the place I used to watch it live was yeah, Channel Four and then Sunday Night Heat we had as well for free on Channel Four. Yeah, they used to and they also done WCW Worldwide on Channel Five for a while when Channel Five yes. first came out. Yeah. Yeah. I like think, as, as Paddy was talking about earlier, the Americana Channel 4 was always good for that. Channel 4 was a Super Bowl channel and yeah. all that kind of the kind of cool stuff like that. But it was always on super late, wasn't it? As you say, it might be to being in the UK, we were obviously up till one in the morning before it kicks off. Yeah. So, Nick, have you ever, now this, I'm not saying you're old, but did you ever get to see any Stampede wrestling? No, actually. And it's probably more, well... Yes and no. That's, uh, you know, not the original stuff. And the reason that being because, yeah, a little, I wouldn't say it was a little bit before my time. It was, it was there when I was watching wrestling, but that was very much based in Western Canada. So even on television where I'm in, in Ontario, which is more the Eastern side, we never really, really wasn't an opportunity to watch it. I know a few friends in town who had like cable and could watch it or whatever. So not, not the original Stu Hart, early British Bulldogs, uh, Bret Hart stuff. Uh, at one point, um, I did meet Keith Hart, actually, because the where I was just after I graduated from college, I uh, was working in a, a town, Cambridge, Ontario, and the Hart brothers were, it wasn't, I would say it wasn't Brett and Owen and them, but the the Hart brothers' name, they were they were starting up a wrestling school, and I, I checked it out just for S&Gs, and they had a bit of an open house, and I got in a conversation with Keith Hart, which is Brett's older brother. And, of course, he was one of the hearts that never really got beyond, you know, maybe, you know, stampede, muck and stalls kind of thing. Um, and But, yeah, he was a bitter old man. He had nothing good to say about Vince McMahon, nothing good to say about Ted Turner. Um, basically how these guys were constantly screwing over his brothers and, and how they screwed over his dad and everything like that. So, like I said, interesting. But, yeah, no, I would I wish. I mean, you hear I see now the old footage or whatever, and there was a lot of. A lot of great stuff way back then in the like late seventies, early eighties from uh, yeah Stampede out in Calgary. Did you talk about schools and stuff then? Has anybody here actually ever been to a wrestling school and done any stuff like that? You obviously you've done a wee bit there, Nick, because you were talking about when they done the free house, but no, I I was tempted, but I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't at that time. I wasn't ready to invest uh, probably quite a quite a bit of money in order to sign up. Um, so I. Yeah, and then, I don't know, yeah, didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I did a bit. Um, so I, I'll we'll get into it later on at some point. So I got quite close with a UK company that was throwing lots of money into the industry, bringing a big, big American names across. Um, and at some point, um, so I had a friend who was quite confident, so he... He was friendly with the owners and that anyway. And then I got a message on the forum saying, um, can we have any help? So I was like, I'll help with the show, whatever. I was, what, 18, 19, first car and whatever, and loving these wrestling shows. Um, so it turns out what they wanted was, because I drove from here to Doncaster, so I got at a couple of hours north, um, so, yeah, Manchester up to Doncaster, um, I passed the airport on the way. So they'd say, well, can you go and pick up the imported American talent and drive them up to Doncaster. So I used to drive, I had Juventus Guerrero, I had um, 
Who else, who else have I had in the car? Uh, yeah, you've entered Guerrero. I had he- Heidenreich, if anyone remembers him. Uh, Matt Hardy. Um, Rick Flair was there, but I didn't drive Rick Flair. So all the Americans. So I actually got to. I actually got to know quite a few of them. And when of course, Rick, know, Rick Flair would have come in a limousine. Oh yeah, <laughs> weird jet, and then a limousine. Yeah, there was him. I they, mean, they, they had. Did they have Sheik over? I think they've had Iron Sheik over. Um, Goldust is another one. So it's like all these ones that. So these are the ones that I used to drive in the car. And as time went on, um, because I was friendly with these guys, the, the security. Sorry, and K Fabe is dead at this point, I guess. Um, I used to stand at the side and do security, so knowing when there was going to be a spot when they jump off that they need someone to at least slightly break the fall. Um, so to do all that stuff, they put us through a couple of days of getting the ring. This is how you would do a basic bump just in case. So I had enough basic training that I could get into a ring and get slapped by a wrestler and take the bump properly and sell it and do all that sort of stuff. Um, so I was a plant a few times and doing that sort of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't say I wasn't fully trained, um, but I did my fair share of knowing what to do and taking bumps in front of a live crowd. Good, I said a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll hand over my belt now. What was the promotion? Uh, that promotion was called. It was called One PW. Okay. Yeah, I remember. Um, so yeah, so we got yeah they they ran for a few years. And my mate that was confident of buying the company and bringing it towards Liverpool, and it died a miserable death. But. Um, was it Martin Kirby involved in that as well, wasn't he? Kirby was in there for a bit. I think he bought it later on with some of the other guys that did. Um, there's a guy called Dragon Isu and some of those. They all bought it. They were around in the industry. Um, but at the time when they did it, they were the big. Um, they had a partnership with TNA going at the time. So you'd get a lot of TNA talent over. So there was like Steve Carino and Abyss and um, Corey Graves as he went back on his wrestling. He was actually SJK. So he was like the main heel. Yeah. Um he did the best promo I've ever he he did the best promo I've ever seen, which caused a massive shock. Um yeah. which is worth mentioning just because it was an incredible piece of thing. You know, when you're in a crowd and there's thousands of people silent because they can't believe what they've just watched. Yeah. Um and there was um a guy, he was he was a disabled guy, um in hindsight, a guy called Dan Edge. Um, and actually what the audience didn't know was he was a trained wrestler, but he was on crutches and disabled. So uh, no, none of the crowd knew what was going on, and he was brought out as the competition winner. And then the heel did a heel turn, and genuinely started beating up this disabled guy in the ring. And you know, and the, the whole crowd is like, I don't know if I should be watching this or not. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just it was one of the biggest UK stuff at the time, so I did loads for them. But yeah, as with regards to wrestling training, then yeah, that was the basics. I had enough to be a slight part of a match and not ruin it to thousands of people watching. Nice. That's cool. That's that that's fully trained to us. We'll, we'll take that. Steve Carino is one of my all time favourites as well. I just I mean Carino from sort of the ECW ninety nine to kind of two thousand, two thousand and one when it kinda died oh. a death. He was just he was champion at a time. His stuff with Dusty Rhodes at like the Bullhorn match and stuff was just unreal. Yeah, so Carino was the booker for this company. So he was the one that would ring his contacts, get the people in, he'd make the storylines, he'd make the matches, he'd do everything. He was the main booker. So the UK the UK guy basically said, here's your almost unlimited budget. Yeah. Do an American-style show, but in the UK. And people travel from all over the UK to go to it. I mean, they had... It was only the Doncaster Dome, but they they had thousands and thousands in there with the names of they, that they were bringing See, I actually went down a Steve Carino wormhole. I didn't realise after ECW he had a really good run in Japan. Mm. He done um, he done a couple of New Japan, but he also done All Japan as well and done really well in All Japan. Yeah, and it's his son is big wrestling, huh? Colby. Yeah, Colby, Colby yeah. as well, yeah. Now I, I can't remember where I've seen him. He wasn't he's not as big or as good, but he is he's not too bad. Yeah, but there's another son. Son that I randomly seen appear on a TV show at the weekend, Taz's son. Okay. So, Ta- again, Taz loved to death human suplex machine. His son is now in AEW, going by the name of Hook. Obviously, Red Hook section in Brooklyn, New York. But I thought that was quite a a cool thing I spotted the other night. It's quite a quite an interesting one. So, you were saying Paddy earlier on that kind of you don't. The hardcore matches are not really your thing. What's what's your favourite style of wrestling? 
Um, I don't know if I have a favourite style. Um, it's, as long as there's a good storyline, and as long as um, there's, there's, a, two, there's two bits, there has to be a good storyline to build up to it, and there has to be a good storyline in the ring. The match has to build. It's good to watch just somebody get flattened every now and again, but uh, as long as there's a reason for it. And again, like I said, I don't like the kind of hardcore matches. It's I mean, there's, a, there's a time and a place for it. The last, so the last hardcore match I watched, um, I don't even know who the other guy was in. It was, it was again Pentagon. It was against somebody at a TNA one or an Impact, whatever it's called now. And I mean, they were just hurting each other and hammering nails into each other's head and everything. It was just, it was rubbish. And I just kind of, that was the first one I watched in ages. And I thought, this is just crap. So it was, I, I think I style. I like, I like technical wrestling, like grappling and things like that. I'm not. I used to be big into kind of the cruiserweight style, like high flying, fast paced moves. Not so much now, um, probably because I could have watched too much of it. In the you could, like I said, um, I watched some of the Japanese stuff as well. Again, it's a bit too fast paced for me. I like kind of technical mat wrestling stuff like that. Oh, I think a lot of the New Japan stuff. So, if you look at like a Wrestle Kingdom in New Japan, some of the technical matches that they've got on show there is just unbelievable. There's not too many flips and tricks and the same planches over the top rope every three minutes and the same super kicks. There's actually some decent decent mm-hmm. content. But I think building the storyline is great. The match can be shite. Like if you look you know, mm-hmm. Grado versus Galloway, right? That match wasn't the best, the one where Foley came down at the end. That wasn't the best match, but the storyline had been building for about a year and a half. Like no companies do that anymore, like a year and a half storyline yeah. build for a payoff. I, yeah, I, would, I, mean, yeah, I, I went to a stage watching the, the New Japan stuff, but I just couldn't get invested in it. And again, I think it's because I wasn't tuning in. I wasn't. I wasn't aware of the stories. I was just watching Wrestle Kingdom, and then and that's that's all I knew about it. But yeah, the, it's all about build and and try and make them kind of a wee bit a wee bit realistic as well. Yeah. I caught yeah. a little bit of NXT UK last night, and it was a uh, Tyler Bate. Yeah. So it was like the kind of Greco, British strong style, whatever you want to call it. And Jen was watching it with me and she was just like, What is this? Why are they why are they grappling? Why are they holding hands? What's going on? I was like, no, I really, really like that technical grappling, yeah. escapism, all of that kind of stuff where it's all like intricate flips and twists and like the straight jacket and everything else. I like I really, really enjoy that because it's it's not quite the high flying they do of kicks, but it's just that more intense for me I think I mean see that build I think that that's what I look for in a wrestling match that kind of mat wrestling the slow build a bit of test of strength kind of thing not, not necessarily traditional test of strength but some kind of test of strength at the end of the day, you, you want to see strong individuals athletes and then see when it builds up and then there's some sort of big explosion like a high flipping move or yep. something big happens like a big showy strength you just go and it just hooks you and that's that It's again like I said there's two parts for me there's the story leading up to it and then there's the story, kind of what's happening in front of you, and that it has to it has to be fluid for me. And I suppose like that's probably not a style, but a build up, a technical build up, and then something just big happens, and the pace changes, and next thing you know, you're you're just hooked into it. Yeah, I got into a year or two ago. It was on Netflix, um, Lucha Underground. So. I'm a big Lucha like fan, like in the mid mid nineties, a buddy of mine, because we were watching wrestling and he, he had, he his dad had a satellite, whatever. And he said, Oh, check this out. And it was like, and of course it was all Spanish commentary. And it was just, to me, it kind of, I've been watching wrestling for years and this was kind of blew my socks off. It's like, you know, the trios and the, what these guys do and just, you know, you talk about, it's not the garbage wrestling, right? Cause it's not the barbed wire, the bats and the flames and all this stuff. It's, you know, and you know, it's not that that grappling, which I know you guys said you like. To me, it was just sort of like this is this is co- like this is a dance because they are moving around, they're flying around, and you're just watching because of all the 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 colorful costumes and and then all that behind it. And then last few years, I was watching, like I said, Lucha Underground, and they were like it was almost over the top in the drama. It was almost like a Mexican soap opera, but it uh, it was definitely entertaining. And for me, the ground is like going back to 
the kind of eighties, early nineties, over the top stories, as you say, it's it's a as a proper soap opera when they go behind all the stuff that happens out with the ring. It's so engaging because of that. And I like the ring as well. The the ring just been there. I mean, it's a standard Mexican. It's like what they're using Triple Eight, but I just love the ring. I mean, I, you'll see my tattoos. I mean, we've got La Parca. So we've got La Parca, Rey Mysterio, Pentagon. Uh, can't even remember who else we've got. Jushin Thunder Liger. <laughs> and, Actually, uh, I've asked for a lucha mask for my Christmas, not because of any kink in it, just because I really want one. <laughs> I, bought, I went through a stage, of, but I bought a load of eBay and got them imported from Mexico. Just, just yeah, so that. Do you oh, want that one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It cost me half a ton of quid. I'm like, yeah, look I, at I, I, have, I have a couple that I've I got never in worn. Mexico. <laughs> In, in Mexico, you get really can't I can't do. explain how jealous I'm that you get genuine Mexican ones. <laughs> so bad. I was going to wear one. I've got the nails. I was going to wear one. I was going to wear one, but nah. Go, go on, stick go one on. Top. Stick one on. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of like that as well. Now, look at that I, again, a, I took a little bit of a break in the wrestling, and it was uh, for some reason, and I'd never heard of ECW before, but I think it was like a replay of Guilty as Charged 99. It was um, Tajiri against Super Crazy. Well, they, they wrestled every week, like on yeah. the. Uh... <laughs> that's awesome. There you go. I'm just like sitting with Pentagon right here on a YouTube. That's it. That's fine. We're all sorted. You can. You have to now stay like that for the rest. I can't hear anything in my headset. That's good. No, no I mean, that's right. Saying it's on video as well. Yeah. No, that's yeah. It was the Tajiri Super Crazy, but it was the kind of the first one where. They had Tajiri out of the, the Y front and he had like a proper, it was, he was Tajiri, the Green Mist Tajiri. And that, that just got me right back into wrestling at that point. Because I also think they had Taz versus Bam Bam Bigelow. And I knew who Bam Bam Bigelow was. I didn't know who anybody else was. But that was kind of, that got me hooked on ECW and got me actually back into wrestling. Yeah. Because I think that that was like the early kind of I got wind of ECW like the early '90s was, um, you know, they called the dirt sheets, right? There was all those newsletters that you could get, and there was just guys out of their basement kind of producing these, right? And this would sort of, you know, all that time before that, you always had the Pro Wrestling Illustrated or the WWF magazine, and then all of a sudden, you know, friends of mine showed me, he said, "Hey, I, you know, found it was somewhere." He started getting uh, every week a new newsletter and. Uh, Pro Wrestling Torch was one, the Wrestling Observer, and all this stuff. So I started reading these and then realizing, oh, there's more, more than just WWF and WCW. There's all these other promotions happening, and there were there's a huge thing about like at that time e- Eastern Championship Wrestling, which became Extreme Championship Wrestling, and and then the fact that they actually had a TV show and everything like that eventually, and and then it, it finally showed up in Canada on. Uh, Spike TV or something like that. So they had a weekly show, and then that's where I was like, I really got into it. Uh, but unfortunately, that was sort of that was near the end as well. <laughs> um, and they were hemorrhaging money, and eventually got bought up by Vince. So I there's a music shop or was I don't know if it's still on the go called HMV. Now yeah. every month you they would bring out the ECW pay per view. So I used to go in and buy it every single month. It was like three months behind. But, I mean, it had, like, the original soundtrack. So Van Damme was coming out to Pantera. Yeah. New Jack was, um, like, properly going going to Dr. Dre. And it was just yeah. proper. I ended up moving house and actually selling all of them. So I had every ECW pay-per-view. I also had some, like, joint ones that they'd done with FMW over in Japan. And I sold them all for about 50 quid. And now... Single DVDs are going for seventy five. I'm like, oh my, <laughs> raging at that seriously, just because it has the the original soundtrack to it. Yeah. Now I do have a random DVD somewhere. It's the um, King of the Death match. So I don't know if anyone's watched that before. With Foley and Terry Funk in Japan, there's like a big. Big death match tournament they have in Japan. I've actually got it signed by Mick Foley. Is that the one with the so, um, with the explosions? Yeah, the barbed wire exploding C four. Yeah, I only watched it after I read his book. Read his book first, and then went back and watched it. 
it's, it's some some tournament. And I was actually meant to get Terry Funk to sign it because he was coming to Glasgow and he was having a sign in, and then he cancelled it. That'd been awesome to have that DVD signed by them both. But no. oh, that would have been awesome. Yeah. I think right. the only DVD I still own is Beyond the Mat. Yes. Yeah, it's classic. It just appeared on Netflix a few did, yeah. few weeks ago, three a few months ago, well, last month or so. It just appeared up on Netflix. Beyond the Mat. It's, it's, Paul, well, Paul Heyman's it's, speech is his his uh, speech that he does in the locker room before their first pay per view. From yeah. that to me, that still gives me chills when I well, hear yeah, it. There's there's also one so. I've been watching, I mean, I don't watch any WWE. I kind of just browse whatever comes up on Reddit and Square Circle. But Heyman's been on, like, Talking Smack or something after it and been cutting these promos with Big E and uh, Kevin Owens the other week. And it's just like, pfft, he's just mind. He's a league he's on, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's done something when he came to Glasgow with Mark Dallas as well. He basically pulls Mark Dallas out of the crowd uh, who's the owner of ICW and basically says the guy is like the man and just builds him up to like godlike. It was just he's just got a way of words. Uh, was, that, was that one of his big Q and A things? I think. Yeah, that's it. yeah. So it's good. I mean, let him run a TV show. Just don't let him run your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> I think is the the best one. So Matt, what's your favourite style of wrestling? My favourite style. See, one of the things that I think you won't get until you've been to a live show is is comedy matches. Yeah. Um, they don't do good comedy matches on TV because they, they need the crowd interaction and they need... You need to hear the wrestlers talk and you don't do that on TV. So I think I would say live, I would always look forward to a comedy match as a break from the other stuff because the right comedic wrestler. So I've seen Colt Cabana a few Colt times. Cabana, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I watched Colt Cabana and a guy called what's his name Darren Burridge yep. against uh, Tracy Smothers and Chris Hamrick okay good um, old ICW, uh, ECW yeah, yeah. I think he died this year didn't he Tracy Smothers yeah about a um, month ago and yeah I mean I wouldn't say it's my favourite style but I think it's a massively underrated style of wrestling because it just doesn't translate to a to a wider audience Um I do. I mean, Colt Cabana in a comedy match. Colt Cabana and Grado in a, in a comedy match was just brilliant. I mean, they do stupid things. Like, they'll just call the spots for the whole match. And it's just stupid stuff like that. And oh. yeah, So I watched I watched Colt Cabana against El Generico yep. in a fans bring the weapons match. So, <laughs> I mean, you can imagine what weapons were used during that match. Um I'm pretty sure the three count involved the condom at some point, so that was the sort of level of um, where that was at. And I think it's a nice little break from more serious stuff sometimes as well. I remember, I remember in Mississauga there was a show and it was bring your own weapons, and of course Canada, right? So we're bringing those hockey tables with the whatever, you know, shovels and whatever, all this other stuff. And one guy brought this. You know those uh, those planes you might have made as a kid out of balsa wood with tissue and everything like that. Someone brought that as a weapon, and of course <laughs> they pulled that out. And of course that those things are like so light and they're completely harmless, right? And apparently the the guy who was on the receiving end sold that like he was hit by the biggest heaviest <laughs> chair ever. Finger of doom. Yeah. Now, the one I love is where uh, who was doing? It? I think Jimmy Havoc was doing it for a while where. He would get, he would go out your fingers, give you a paper cut, and then squeeze the lemon juice into it. Yeah. But obviously, I mean, it's just water or whatever they're squeezing in there. But folks selling that is just hilarious. I'm sure I read him talking about it, and he does use lemon juice oh, in some yes. of it to get the to get the genuine reaction. Yeah, he's apparently done it to a few folk that he wasn't too too fond of, like proper <laughs> lemon juice, which is silly because I mean he cuts he bleeds quite often during matches so you'd think some of that would kind of yeah. go there as take well. It off him. Take yeah. it off him and put it over. Yeah, or stay, I mean he was doing the whole staple and somebody he hates face them. Like, I remember Jimmy Havoc and uh, Osprey had like a huge, in fact I actually still have that kicking about somewhere. The Jimmy Havoc Osprey match where 
Osprey won the belt off him. Yeah, Jimmy Havoc like fucked his knee over in Australia and basically like, pawned off everything in his life. I mean, I got that that signed T-shirt off him for like two hundred quid. He's in AEW now. Is he? Is uh, he no, still in AEW? You're not allowed to talk about him nowadays because right. he's part part of that whole wrestlers um, uh, me shouldn't be spoke me about. Too. Yeah, yeah. Right. wrestling me too thing. So he's probably not. Oh, like, right. We should probably beep his name out, but <laughs> it's part of UK wrestling history, so we don't really really take him out. Yeah. So moving on from that, because that's a whole crazy subject. We don't even want to get involved. Nah, in. no. I'll stay away from that. So. Does everyone still watch wrestling? And what promotions do you watch right now? I do. Um, I, so it's it's difficult to watch it because of the, the amount of content that's on there. Um, and I say I'm, I'm a WWE, F, WWE guy. I don't watch much more than WWE. If I hear a match recommended to me, I'll go back and watch it. Um, but what I was doing before before lockdown, I was saving them all up because I don't have much time to do it. So I would just like save up all the pay-per-views and then going when I went on holiday that was my holiday I'd go skydiving all day during the day at night I would sit in an apartment on my own drinking beer and watching like three pay-per-views, three pay-per-views just to catch up with it um now I'm kind of watching wrestling in 20 minute slots like one match at lunchtime <laughs> a day um it's it's good the the UK stuff's really good the NXT UK's I, I watch quite a lot of that and I'll I'll skip through I, I won't watch every match on a pay-per-view but the 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 wrestling at the moment in the WWE is really really good despite there not being any crowds which I'm surprised at but it's, it's keeping me keeping me hooked on it. I think I'm I'm kind of scunnered on NXT UK because me and Ian have probably seen every single match they could ever put on because we've what we've been to ICW we've been to Progress there's only so many times you can see Joe Coffey do his flying back elbow and his yeah. Yeah, I mean, spinning up. Like, yeah, me and Ian could call move for move mm. a Joe Coffee match. That that's what it is. It's spinning lariat, back elbow off the ropes. Yeah. You could actually call that full match. Um, and I think I text you one day where he was on the telly and like this is what's going to happen the next three moves. Ah, yeah, you go. I think for me that's going to. I loved going to ICW because I loved how kind of raw it was, right and. You had Grado doing his kind of comedy stuff, and then obviously he was doing a lot of stuff in the States and flying back and forth, and they were getting Mick Foley in and kind of bringing a lot of the big hitters in, like Kurt Angle and stuff like that as well. But it was good, but then eventually I think that just got a little bit mm, for me, just because I think we were going to everyone all the time. And they did lose a lot of stars at that point. I mean, when we when we went there, you were you had Galloway, you had Fergal, Devitt. I mean... I actually think it was it wasn't even about the wrestling, it was about the crowd. Like the ICW oh. crowd was what I'd imagine the old school ECW one was. That's what I liked about it. So I went I've only been one and it was yeah. it was maybe like I used to go to a promotion down south in Bristol. It was Pete Dunn's promotion run he ran Attack Pro Wrestling. Attack Pro yeah. run it run three three shows a year in Bristol in a church hall and it, it was fantastic. It was family, like it was family the other Christmas special every year, it was family friendly lesson. And it was, but they did like a theme at Christmas and uh, sort of Christmas theme. But you'd have like, you know, uh, Michael McAllister versus the Sticky Bandits, and they would play out these yeah. uh, uh, matches in the ring. It was fantastic. And then I went to ICW up here when I moved back up, and the the, the best bit about it, I mean, I, I wasn't nothing blew me away at all because I was, I think I was, I was pumped about it because I'd heard so much about it. I was like, I can't believe I'm back back home. I'm going to see an ICW match. And uh, it, but it was the fact that it was like it was a nightclub. Everybody yep. was just standing in a in a bar watching the and the atmosphere was fantastic. But it, it was one of the it was like their their way of the Royal Rumble, their kind of version of the Royal Rumble. Oh, right, right. square go. Aye, and it was good. But I didn't see anything that that wowed me. And so yeah, yeah, so the nice. yeah, the square go. So the square go is quite a long, boring one. I think the Rumble would be like that as well after a while because it's one big-ass long match, whereas at least when it's a card of like five or six matches, it's broken up a little bit. It takes a lot of investment. Was it at um, the garage or was it at the O2? It was at, um, what's the nightclub called? It was um, not the garage. SWG. SWG. SWG3. Uh... All right, so it was just like last year. 
Aye, aye. That's that's, aye you've missed the good stuff. You've missed the good stuff. Because like, that's the, the, it was the, the best bit was Trent Seven coming out of number seven. Yeah. And that was just because everybody went mental. But the rest of it was just people hitting each other with golf clubs and bottling each other and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. Trent, Trent had such a good, good run when he won the, well, like in ICW, it was, it was mad. Yeah. But I think, yeah, the ICW, it was more about the fans than it was about anything else. It was just, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but I mean, at the time you had Drew Galloway was there, you had Noam Dar, they were Brian Folk in every other week. Um, Matt Cross. So if you remember uh, from Lucha Underground, um, Havoc. Yeah. So he was coming, he was there. I mean, we almost watched him break his neck one night. Remember that? When he came over the top, he basically came over the top rope and his neck, like that way, hit the guardrail. Aye, some of the stuff's been crazy. Lionheart as well. Yep, Lionheart. Back, yep. back when he was doing really, really well and stuff, coming back for his broken neck. So it was. I, 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 I saw um, Jody Fleisch. Remember the Jody Fleisch? Yeah. So I went to a, I went to a King Europe event in Liverpool, and it was all like um, I think it was eight or sixteen promotions sent one wrestler, and it was like a it was oh, what's the guy, guy's name? Um, it'll come back to me. A big American wrestler led it all and brought them all together. Um, his name will come Is back. The legend to me. by any chance? No, it was. He'll come back to me at some point. Um, but he he organised it all, and yeah, Jody Fleisch did a match, and he did a he did a shooting star press from the top rope to the outside, but misjudged it and caught his jaw on the on the steel stairs. And I just remember him stood up and he looked, and his face is like that. Jeez. And I was like, oh, that was probably the worst thing I ever saw. Yeah, so there you go. I just thought I'd throw that there. But yeah, Jody Fleisch was a good one I saw live. Yeah, he's still, he's back on the go as well. He's like bulked up. He's a big lad now. Yeah, he that guy was called. So the, the weirdest one, or the one that I find most horrible, it was, and I don't think you were at this one, Ian. I think it was just me and Graham that were there. Mikey Whiplash, who's like a cross-dressed and, it's not Whiplash, uh, Whipwreck, who oh. I thought it was initially. I was like, oh, Mikey Whipwreck's going to be there. Brilliant, but no. He's, he's a little bit different. He um, kind of jumped to the outside and broke the... So the guardrail has, like, the individual poles in the middle. So he broke one of them, fine, it came away, came back in, done another dive to the outside, and it literally went about that deep in his thigh. Uh, they basically had to do a quick fo- a quick finish and wrap him up and get him to the hospital. It was like he was standing up and he was shooting up over his head. It was that... that mm-hmm. hot. Uh. <laughs> mass transit all over again. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, we've seen some brutal matches like with uh, Mikey Whiplash and a few of the others. Like they don't care; they just. Oh. New Jack, have you seen New Jack live? Uh, no, I would have loved to have seen that. Uh, the guy's name was thinking Alex Shane. Alex Shane, right? Okay, yeah. He's a producer somewhere now. Was he not producer for TNA for a while? Probably. Uh, I was waiting because I listened to a podcast recently. So I listened to Crime and Sports podcast. I don't know if anyone else listens to that. But they, they I just... listened to one episode. It was the Nightheart one. Is that the night one that's got Nightheart on it? Yeah, the, the Anvil yeah. one. Yeah, they've done that about yeah. like, all this cocaine. That was really good, really good. So, I mean, these podcasts are like three hours long. And it's like from birth till the last time they started Coke. It's like brilliant. It's like hilarious. But. They've done it on New Jack, and New Jack's just like, ah, fuck him, I cut him, what are you going to do, send me to jail? And then he was doing, like, these, um, he was in jail receiving collect calls, taking celebrity phone calls. Like, you know when you can phone a celebrity and speak to them for five minutes? He was doing that in the prison. <laughs> it's like, that is the most New Jack thing you've ever seen in your life. Um, but no, that's, that's good. So, I think, so everyone's pretty much said, are you still watching it, Nick, or just... Kind of. No, I'll, I'll catch it. If I'm flipping through channels, I'll see it. And yeah, it's it's. I think it was like what Ian was saying, or maybe I don't know what you when you guys were saying about it's different now with the no crowds. It reminds me of the old, uh, you remember the old uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling or whatever, right? It's being filmed in a TV studio kind of thing and small crowd. 
Um, so it's got a totally different vibe to it. And I, you know, trying to, when hockey was, when they did the hockey playoffs as well, you do realize a live crowd adds an element yep. and it's definitely missing. Like you see them, they had the TV screens up now. And so if I saw that and it's like, yeah, that helps. But, you know, I am, I don't know about you guys, but I'm done with this fucking pandemic. <laughs> like seriously, yep. like it's, uh, you know, it's it's been fun for a while, and for me, my I work from home and always have. Um, but overall, it's like, yeah, we're done. Let's wrap it up, everybody. Let's get the shot. Let's, and it's going to take a few months, and let's burn our masks and travel the world. <laughs> so, Once I, that's, I made a mistake um, just a couple of weeks ago. Somebody recommended to watch that. Um, it was a Walter versus Dragonoff, the, the NXT UK oh, one. Yeah, um, yeah. And then somebody said, Watch that, it's brilliant, you know. But then I thought, right, I'm going to sit and watch this. But before I watch it, I'll watch some other watch else. First, I watched Canadian Stampede because I'd never seen Canadian Stampede, then your house. I watched that, and then I put on Walter the NXT UK with no crowd whatsoever, and it just ruined the whole thing for me because I was like, you know, going from an absolutely crazy crowd the first time WWE F is in Canada to just no crowd oh, at all in the beat. That 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 whole that whole feud between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, which I mean there was legitimate heat between those two at those times, but I remember watching Raw one week would be filmed in the US and of course, you know, everybody would be for Sean Pro USA and then it would be filmed in Canada and it'd be the exact opposite. The heels became faces, the faces became heels. And that whole, that pay-per-view where that ended up in the end there, you're right, that Calgary crowd or like the fact all the hearts Same. were there. Yeah, that's, you know, that to, that, that's, you, you can't do storylines like that anymore, right? Like that, and that built for months and months and just slow burn, slow boil, and then just exploded. It was, I mean, yeah. It was even just like, the, the start, because they brought them, they bought like the whole family out right at the very start of the pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Like that was the first bit was, here is the whole Hart family brought out one by one. I mean, you had Diana Smith and like Bulldog's yeah. wife, and you had everyone. Like you had twelve-year-old Natty and Tyson and kid and everyone. It was like. The, now, do you think people don't get storylines like that anymore because of COVID this year? I know the storylines like that weren't there in a lot in WWE recently, anyway. But the COVID pandemic where they can't travel. Like, what was the first live event they did in COVID? And there was no crowd. It was like one of the, the, the rumble type things. I can't remember what it was, but it was on yeah. late at night. And it, it was, was like watching a training match. Was it not uh, Mania? It was Mania. It was Mania. Mania it was, yeah. But it was like watching a training was, match because all you could hear was silence and them in the ring. And you're like, it was kind of cool. You can hear the ring. But then mm -hmm. as Nick's saying, because they had no atmosphere, no no crowd, there was there was no hustle, no bustle. So now they've got the TVs in and, and kind of canned audience sounds and stuff. And it's a bit better. But it's still a wee bit weird. So AEW have, so they f actually film theirs outdoors. So they get about 2,000 in. So the AEW ones are actually not too bad now. Um, and they've been doing that recently. I mean, the whole thing that's annoyed me about wrestling in the pandemic is Drew McIntyre. So <laughs> no. a Scottish, Scottish wrestler wins the biggest prize it's in wrestling. finally on the map. When no fucking fans there. Then loses it to Randy Orton and wins it back two weeks later. And the strangest thing you've ever seen. I mean, why drop the belt and give him it back? That's the only time really I've watched any proper WWE. Is I've watched Galloway's promos and then his matches and that's been it. Reigns has done some good things now. Roman Reigns and, um, what's his name? Jey Uso. Uso doing yeah. good stuff. It's good. Yeah, and that's all leading up to the, the, the tables. What is it, the... TLC, the tables, ladders, and chairs. It's leading up to the Rock versus Reigns, in my opinion. Yeah, but, 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 but they'll need, they'll need to drag it out. Back. They have to drag it out. That's what's beautiful about it because they would do it tomorrow if they could at like, Mania. But, but they have to drag it out because I don't see the Rock coming back for for no fans. No, well, that's why one of the few things that doing the Rock and Cena twice in two years was well because they, they had a year to say he was getting his revenge. Yeah, and that was it was nice uh, having that long. It was the same as. Michael's was it Shawn Michaels Undertaker did two years back to back as well. That was brilliant. Have you seen the Undertaker documentary? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's yeah, fantastic. I think for me, I mean, yeah, I, I watch a little bit of NXT UK. It just it's the same old, same old. I mean, even because I've been over to Germany and watched WXW, I've seen Walter, I've seen Dragonov, I've seen Ringkampf and all them. So it, it is the same old thing. So. 
It's been AEW. I'm absolutely loving it. I mean, Jericho is one of my all-time favourites, and Jericho being one of the main ones in there. Um, and like Kenny Omega recently has been brilliant. So I don't know if you know this, Nick, as well. Cyrus the virus. Oh yeah. Yep. Is um, is in like the most prominent storyline in AEW at the moment, and it's like unbelievable. It's like you're the fucking network, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember that. So, what was the the last match that you watched on TV or live? TV live, whichever. Go live. That could be more interesting. Uh, I'm trying to think. The last the last live one would have been a local show. Um, and I don't even try not even. Oh no, that's not true. Last live of what I went to a couple, uh, probably two or three years ago, a buddy of mine, he he came down to Ottawa because they were doing a SmackDown taping. Right. So, yeah, that was yeah. It was a, uh, I don't even remember the match itself. There was a signing between like Roman Reigns and uh, the former. What was the name of their their squad there? The not the Enforcers. Shield. The Shield. Shield. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a whole thing with that, Randy Orton and them. So that was the last live show I've been to. I did watch the that match you guys were just talking about a minute ago, the the Drozdov one, uh, yeah. Walter. Yeah. Yeah, that one, I, I yeah, because a buddy of mine texted me. He says, I know you're not watching wrestling, but check this out. And that was, yeah, that that to me, that's old school. That could have, that match could have happened in the 70s. Yeah. Um, and that would have been a main event for sure. The way See, I loved progress had a, for a while they had a title called the atlas title which was for basically it was like horse wrestling it was big 250 pound i'm just going to stand and we're going to toe to toe and slap the living shit out of each other <laughs> and there's a guy or oh, what's his name now i can actually hear his, his music and he's just signed for wwe nxt um he comes out to hate breed i will be heard oh, bollocks he, Rampage, uh, Rampage Brown. He is a big beast, and he would just slap the living shit out of anyone. So when he, him and Walter go up against each other, that's going to be an absolute belter. So yeah. let's have a wee Paddy. What was the last one you watched? Live, it would have probably been that ICW one. Yeah. Um, or I can't remember what, what I watched last. I was at a house. I went to a house show as well, a WWE house show. Um, and again, on paper it sounds brilliant, but it being a house show, it, yeah. was, it, was, it, was, it was Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, and Samoa Joe. Do you know what I mean? And, and on paper, Only, I could, mean, but but a house show. Yeah. <laughs> can't remember one significant thing in it, um, and or, or it being that ICW one. I can't remember what came last. Um, on the network, I watched uh, Sasha Bailey, the first one, Brooklyn, uh, yesterday. Why just the lunchtime? I've done that um, because I watched the the other one. Recently, the, the, the recent one, we did a Hell in a Cell, and um, I thought the other one's better, and it made me want to watch NXT Brooklyn again. That was awesome. Live, um, it was probably a local indie in Liverpool. Um, it was, if I remember rightly, it was, what was his name? Zach Knight and Zebra Kid, which is Paige's His brothers. Brother, yeah. Um, against somebody, but they're they're hardcore, so they were jumping off the but jumping off the barriers and the band of, off the top level and whatever. Um, so that was a good little match live. Um, Ram, think, in fact, I think Rampage Brown was there for that event. I don't think he was in that match, but he was certainly at that same event. Um, and then recorded it'd be something AEW. I I had a thing for Orange Cassidy for a while, so I was probably watching one of Orange Cassidy's matches. Just because I think oh, he's hilarious. He does my tits in. He, I don't know. He just... I like, uh, I, like, yeah, just I like the gimmick, so I think I was just watching yeah. it. I, I was just chatting with mates about with the gimmick, so I was finding funny things of his gimmick that he was doing. I think you have to, definitely have to be bought into that gimmick. Yes. But, you have to, well, you have to have been watching it for a while and know who he is. If you just watch yeah. it with no context, it makes no sense, other than this guy just being an idiot with his hand in his pockets. Right. Ian, last one you watched? Last one I watched would have been NXT last night, or UK last night. I don't know how, why. Not in, 
it's weird. Jen actually, like Jen said to me the day, if you were watching the wrestling this weekend and because we're this podcast, and I was like, no, I kind of forgot we were doing the podcast. But I watched a bit of WWE, SmackDown, Raw, and NXT, both US and, and UK, over the weekend, just because <laughs> I randomly caught it on the telly. As Nick said, I was just channel hopping, and it was all on Friday night, and I just sat and watched it, and thinking, oh, man, I love this again. Like, it's the first time I've watched it in ages. I think prior to that, Mark, it probably would have been Discovery in Edinburgh at the Corn Exchange. I think that's probably our last in-person one we went to, or Progress. I can't work. I can't make up my mind which one it is. Well, but I think it would be Discovery. Fear and Loathing, Lionheart winning the belt. Was that before or after Discovery? I mean, that Discovery show was unreal. Discovery had... Uh, we had Cody Rhodes. We had the Young Bucks. We had Kenny Omega. Um, they also had some of the New Japan ones. So it was... Um, Yano Tori, um, I can't even remember how you pronounce it. They Tak Tanahashi as well. They had like some big names over and like in Edinburgh, like madness. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to look on Google just now for dates and stuff to see if I can remember when it was. But it's been a few years since we've been to, since I've been to something live. Definitely, it's been a long time. A lot so longer last, than I probably um, want to admit. The last one I went to was a uh, an NXT UK taping. In Glasgow, at the um, blah, 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 um, Brayhead, and the main event of that one was Noam Dar against Walter, and that's when Ringkamp came out. So you had like Axel Dieter Jr. and what's the big ginger so- Sawyer Fulton or whatever his name is, Alexander Rolf is that his name? That was insanity. I don't know if anyone remembers that. Something like that. Uh, Sandy was Alexander Wolf, Eric Young, and Kelly and Dane. That was it, yeah. Big demo. So they, they're all ones that were kind of a lot in the UK scene. But that was the last one I was at live. The last match that I watched would have been Kenny Omega versus John Moxley last week for the AEW title. I heard that was really good. Yeah. That would be no. Oh no, actually no. I watched um, AEW at the weekend, so whatever the main event of that was. Um, Is it something with Sting? No doubt. No, Sting was there, but um, just halfway through. Oh bollocks! I'm sure it was a tag team match as well. There was a brilliant tag team match. So uh, the Young Bucks against the Hybrid too. So I don't know if I mean if you've been to Indies and Helico, mm-hmm. he. He is unbelievable. He's like, he must be about 110 pounds soaking wet, but he is unbelievable. He's like a break dancer. He just, his moves are unreal. I've seen him in Germany a few times and he's just like mind boggling. So I think that would have probably been the, the last one that, the last match that I watched. It's going to annoy me what the main event of that show was, though. Which I cannot for life for me remember. So has Ian managed to advance Google that one? I can't. It's, no? it's like the Young Bucks and this, uh, Discovery Wrestling and stuff like that's coming back 2015 and it's not it's not been that long. No, no. They they come over quite a bit. I mean Discovery spent some, some decent money. So picked part of December 2017, potentially. Possibly. So while Ian's still searching, Matt, favourite match of all time, live and on TV. Throw me under the bus with that one. Uh, favorite match of all time. So live will have been. I watched Steve Carino versus Abyss in a barbed wire rope match, which was the first time I ever really saw a hardcore match live, and it was the old, it was the end of an eighteen month feud. Jeez, so it was man. a proper payoff and. And they ended it with a light tube spot, and it's the first time I've ever seen light tube used in a match and that sort of stuff. So I just think that for the for sheer emotion and payoff, probably that. Best match I've ever watched? I mean, it's got to be something like Michael's and Taker. Something like that for me, and when I used to watch it was, yeah. Something like Shawn Michaels and Taker or, yeah, it's going to be that. I think. Paddy? 
best match. Yeah, live and Live's, on TV. Live's a hard one. Um, I've seen loads of good Pete Dunne matches when I was in Bristol. Um, i trying to think who he was against. <laughs> it was against a, it was a guy. He, he's not... He's bigger than this. I can't even remember his name. He has a wee puppet with him. A bit of, kind of comedy guy. Um, but he's brilliant. Um, Pete Dunne and him. <laughs> Whatever he is, can't remember his name. He's not made it through. I've not seen any head of anything him other than those shows. Um, but it was awesome. Um, uh, on tape, recorded. Um, it's a bit of a controversial one, probably. Um, Stone Cold in the Rock at 17. Because of the ending. Everybody knows they don't like the ending. But and I think an emotion, emotional investment. And that, to me, was... And, I, and a lot of people could play about the ending, but I, I don't. For me, I couldn't end it any other way. I just like I don't know who I want to win. I just want somebody to win. How, how can they get a winner? And then they, they ended it without a clear winner, really. That was um, the first time I ever remember somebody using somebody else's finisher. And they do it a lot in that match as well. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I just I could watch that every day. I just think right right from the start it's, it goes, and then. Um, I like. I really like um, a close second one for me though is the second triple threat with Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, and Samoa Joe. Um, that if, if you haven't seen that, that is awesome. But this is the first one's better as well, but I like the second one better. The second one, I, I guess getting promotional investment. But I think it's you've got to be in the moment as well when you're watching it and you're, you know, as well. My pal's watching it as well, and it was just phenomenal. Nick. Oh, for greatest ever of all time, still to me, WrestleMania three, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat for Randy Macho Man Savage. And you can watch that on YouTube now. It's that was one for the ages. And that was, you know, of course, so that time was Hogan Andre overshadowed that. But that was by far the best match of um, the one the one I remember, the one I'll go back to time and time again, as this is this is wrestling. These are two guys that are just going all out. Um, putting everything on the line. And it's, you know, that classic old school, that 80s that kind of had, you know, the George Animal Steel there and Elizabeth and everything like that. That, to me, just sort of encapsulated everything. Um, live match. Jeez, I have... Uh, it, that's that's just hard. I, I remember so much, like probably so many, going to so many events. And it's really the the people you're with and the energy of the crowd. I think that's what remembers it for me. Like, I remember a lot more of the friends I was with and the times we had than probably a lot of the matches themselves, just because it is one of those things when watching wrestling is just sort of like you kind of get up, you kind of get let yourself get eaten up into the drama of it all. And, you know, yelling and screaming and going to work the next day and absolutely having no voice left whatsoever because you were uh, – you know, cheering on and all that kind of stuff. So I don't think there's a particular match, but I would I would say anybody who's listening who's never been to a live wrestling before, I always used to tell people there's two types of wrestling fans in the world. Those that are wrestling fans and those who don't know that yet. And so I recommend uh, if you've not been, and I, I, this is the other thing I'm wondering about this podcast, because I know this is sort of kind of under the guise originally as a power platform. And I wonder if anybody of those folks are still sticking around. So, uh, But... But yeah, yeah. So yeah, don't have a favorite match, but a lot of favorite memories for sure. Okay, Ian, I'm going to skip the recorded ones because I don't have a lot of experience in that, right? But live for me, and it, and it kind of echoes what Nick and Paddy and everybody said so far. It's about the moment, probably the zero G title in ICW, Lionheart and Kenny Williams. The Two people match? that. Hmm? Is that the ladder match now? Uh, it's like from 2016 or something. It's a long, long time ago. It's not a ladder one, but it's the one that Kenny Williams does the moonsault off the bar at the ABC. Right. So there's loads of action in the crowd beforehand. There's loads of fighting in the crowd, typical. They're not, they're not, not normally of like the best interactive wrestlers at that point, and it's just the crowd getting involved in it. But Kenny does a moonsault, so it's like off the bar. He's about two or three levels up flips off the back, does a moonsault, the super kicks galore. Uh, Lionheart does a backflip off a lower bar. They both take out security guards. It's a total stramash. And then when they're in the ring, Kenny thinks he gets a count, 
that Lionheart's got his foot on the rope, that a ref didn't spot, another ref comes out the back, and they have to do a recount as another super kick, stuff like that. It's just the moment of it getting captured within it, for me, is probably one of the best matches I've seen. Like, Will Ospreay's great, does lots of flips, lots of tapes and stuff, getting fun about for him, but I just think that, for me, is the moment of the watching the fans, just seeing him jumping off the air is just momentous. What about yourself? Right, so... It's different. So emotional matches and getting involved and bought in. It was probably Grado and Drew Galloway for that belt at the SECC. But in terms of actual matches, it's the same tag team in both of them. um, And it's War Machine. So can you remember War Machine against uh, Polo Party? Uh, Yeah. Is it Polo Party? What were they called again? The pull party, and then we were in progress in Manchester. It was War Machine yep. against the two guys. Um, one of them we're probably still not allowed to talk about, but like War Machine, have you seen like what are they called in WWE now? Eric and Victor, or whatever they're called, the the fake Highlanders. I can't remember what their names are now. Um, the Viking ones. And then the Viking ones. There was the, the yeah, War Raiders. Raiders. There's War Raiders, and then they've been called the Viking right. Raiders when they moved to Raw. So the Viking Raiders. Yeah, they called War the Raiders. The Raiders known as War Machine. The Viking Raiders. Viking Raiders. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Raymond Rowe and Hanson. Oh, Eddie and Ivar. Yeah. War Beard Hanson and War Beard, whatever. <laughs> Honestly, like they were just knocking the absolute crap out of each other. Now, these guys are, what, about 350? They were doing, like, dives over the top rope. There's one spot where one of them able to miss them, bounces off the rope and just scalps them. It's like, it's, oh, it's unbelievable. Um, their, combined riots, weight, their combined weight, according to Wikipedia, is 250 kilos, 522 pounds. Yeah. Honestly, they were just like these guys were just phenomenal. There we go. Nick's all set up in the old um, next next OBW in the ring. rings. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say that was probably one of those two. I think probably the the London riots one because we got we were sitting quite close to the front and then ended up getting told to move because somebody was going to get flung into our seats. And um, that was that match in Manchester. Um, now. Another, I'm going to totally go on a total tangent on this one, though. The biggest pop that I've ever had at a live wrestling event was ICW announced that Finn Balor was coming back for one night only. And honestly, that place just, I I mean, it was a music venue and I thought they were going to get flung out for the sound being so loud there. That Were you at that one? When they had the Finn, that was just unbelievable yeah. as, a, as a pop. Um <sighs> In terms of actual matches, probably Okada versus Omega at Wrestle Kingdom. I mean, I just love the Japanese matches because you they're forty five minutes long and you just get bought into them. Like there's, it's a slow burner. There's the false finishes. They're then hitting like some heavy moves and there's more false finishes. There's no referee bump. Somebody comes in, another referee bump. It's like proper go for it matches. I mean that's that was one one up unbelievable. I there's another match and I cannot remember what life of me. I can remember being like so emotionally invested in it and then I've cried at the end. It was like one of those ones that just takes you on that whole journey. <laughs> Actually I think I want to fling in anything with Mustache Mountain. Oh, I think yeah. that's just because I love a beard and I love that styling but Mustache Mountain I totally love everything See, that, that they do. What- that one they did last year was it that um, they, they got voted number three in like the top one hundred yeah. matches for WWE. That was insane. That that's brilliant. Yeah, that was Mustache Mountain yeah. and Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, wasn't it? I think so. I, uh, I'm pretty. I sure. can't believe like because like, I see to see because Tyler Bate was a regular at the, the Bristol thing and stuff. And just seeing yeah. like him, um, his first match, he was dressed up as oh, some yeah. like. Um, Fairground bodybuilder, who do yep. you wave? Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Just, oh, amazing then, and just to see him come up through the ranks. Yeah, there you go. Brilliant. Mustache Mountain versus Undisputed Era. Trent Seven, Tyler Bate versus Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong. It was. It wasn't Bobby Fish. Yeah. Um, 
But I think Paddy that's that is when they came out as like the typical circus and like they had the curved moustaches right. and the fake weights and all that stuff, like the, the traditional style dumbbells and like I, I totally bought any all of that element. Like I love that. I think the the Moonstalk one is just probably the most iconic thing I've been to is a live and it was yeah. four or five years ago probably when I was getting into going to live events. So it was the thing that signed me up. Uh, the one I always remember was when Drew Galloway kicked Noam Dar off the top level of the um, of the garage. So it's a nightclub. So you've got yeah. the nightclub, and then at the very top, you've basically got like a standing platform. It's and amazing in the area. <laughs> yeah, it's like a 30 foot drop, and Galloway basically kicks Noam Dar off the top of that. And he landed like literally three people away from us. It was, oh, it was mad. Right, so one. One wrap-up question, and you only get one answer on it. Favourite wrestler, Paddy? <laughs> I knew that was coming. One answer is a hard one. I didn't expect, to expect that caveat. Can I go last? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's got to be. It's got to be Stone Cold for me. Okay. I was. I was. If you'd asked me a couple of years ago, I was between Stone Cold and Mick Foley. Despite me not liking hardcore matches either, but it was between Stone Cold and Mick Foley. But I think it was the last Raw reunion, and the whole thing was rubbish. But when Stone, when the glass broke and Stone Cold came down, that was it. I thought, right, that's it. He's he's the man. Yeah. Nick, uh, that's that's got to be the legendary, the great Ric Flair, bar none. I ever since I saw him, uh, <laughs> arrogant as he was, the Four Horsemen all the way through. Um, I don't know, just something about him. You know, the chops, the woo, the running down the ropes and doing the little two-step face plant. I don't know. He's yeah. he's got it all, and uh, and it's, it's funny to see his his daughter now kind of kind of take up that torch. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The one I used to love was the turnbuckle. Where he'd ro- he'd do the head, the turn, yep. the turnbuckle, flip over, walk. Boom. That was just vintage flair. Matt. Between two, uh, can I pick the final one? It's either Mick Foley or The Rock, I would say. Um, just because I remember them most. Um, I think probably because he introduced me into wrestling, Mick Foley. Yeah. Um, between that and the I Quit match with The Rock, I mean, they were the two things that just got me. So, is it Mick, is it Mick Foley, though, or is it Mankind? Or Cactus Jack. Yeah, well, well or, 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 for what the one match he did. Um, I mean, the character of mankind was an incredible character. Yeah. I mean, for a for a man that admittedly himself he couldn't wrestle, he's yeah. done. He, he's he's made a good career out of it, and I think so. I think I don't think I ever watched anything where I didn't enjoy what he did. So yeah, I would say Mick Foley is mankind probably. Yeah. You could say you could say dude love Matt. We're not going to oh, judge. Yeah, you can do. <laughs> I, I almost wore my full dude love outfit, but opted against it. Uh, yeah, I think. Sorry, Ian. On you go. I'll let you go. I think I need to go iconic on it with Mick Foley as well, and it's probably more because that's who I remember. If it's not, I don't really want to say the Ultimate Warrior. I kind of get introduced with wrestling Ultimate Warrior, but Mick Foley at that period was I loved The Rock. I really like, but. I didn't watch wrestling with The Rock in it, but I like The Rock's persona. I like who he plays. So for that reason, I can't pick The Rock. Yeah. I just like him as a person. Like, mm-hmm. if I was putting a model up somewhere, it would be The Rock, but only because I think he's awesome right now. But definitely Mick Foley, I think, would be the, the iconic one that's been consistent throughout time. Yeah. No, I mean, I I would go for that. But I'm kind of, I've... For me, he's not wrestled in the past six or seven years when I've been mm-hmm. more and more into it. So, I mean, we've we've met him a couple of times, like, through through the wrestling. I've had the signings from him and stuff. Um, and good old, like, ECW, everything that you just read about him. I've read all of his books and everything. I love him to death. But for me, it's Chris Jericho. Right? Mm. Now, for and it's weird because I went from, like, ECW to then cruiserweights in WCW and then I kind of went over to WWE just as he was debuting and the, he can do everything he can do comedy like I mean the biggest part that I remember is the like the list the original list of Jericho with the, the man of 1002 holds 
where he legitimately went to an ad break and read every single one of them so much that the crowd were booing the fuck out of him at the end. So I'd say, and the fact that he's reinvented himself like so, so many times. Like he'd done a, a little stint in New Japan where he was the pain maker, where he was like totally like death metaled up with face paint and everything. And like he was, he had a fight with Tensei Naito and like unbelievable match. You can think he's he turned fifty like three weeks ago and he's pulling off matches like that and he's like at the best of his game right now. He's just for me, he's been there the whole time. I've watched it like in my modern era. So yeah, for me it is. The one and only Chris Jericho. <laughs> and uh, Raven as well. I have to throw Raven in there as well. Cause You're the one that told us we're only like, yeah, one no, no. <laughs> Raven as well, but Raven's kind of disappeared in the background a little bit. See, yeah, you've got loads of uh, favourites for different... I mean, exactly ah, yeah, that's, that's what you're saying my favourites. That's why you can't like but You've got a different... I'm, 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 my favourites also Shawn Michaels because I'm, if I'm watching WrestleMania, I want Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Do you know Do you know my, my recent yeah. favourite is The Fiend. Like, I just love that character. I love how dark and demonic The Fiend is. And it's a throwback, like the glove, the sock oh. puppet and all that. Like, mm-hmm. I'll, I like I got so excited about Bray Wyatt and I got so bought into all the hype about The Fiend. And, like, mm-hmm. I, it's probably the first time in my adult life that I went to the WWE store and bought merch and I bought pretty much everything they had. <laughs> I was tempted to buy the puppets and all that stuff. Watched all these YouTube, the little kid kind of... Who oh, come to my playhouse and all that? Like, I could so bought into it. Yeah. And then you've got, like, you know, which technical, it's, it's, you know, Bret Hart and Kurt Angle in that conversation. So you've got, you've got different favourites. You can't have one favourite. I don't like that. I think we're, yeah. we, we're all in agreement there. You can't have one favourite wrestler. No, I think, yeah, I think you've got, like, a, a past era, an attitude era, and a current era favourite, maybe. I don't know. You've got a Mount Rushmore, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you've maybe got more. Okay, but I was only as a kid, my favorite was probably a big boss man. I just loved the fact they came out with a knife stick and battered everybody. <laughs> or the mount- <laughs> Please tell me that uh, the mount- no, repo man. <laughs> I did Jack love the mount. That is great. <laughs> Jack Rougeau that played the mount-y? Jack Jack Rougeau. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they, I'm sure they were brothers. The, the fab, they're the marvelous Russo brothers. No, it was the, yeah. the fabulous Rougeaus, and it was Ray and Ray Rougeau and Jacques Rougeau. And yeah. if you ever go on YouTube and watch, Jacques Rougeau is getting a haircut, and someone's interviewing him, and he'll tell stories about Andre, about the Hearts, and Hogan, and everybody else. And it just it just will suck up your whole Saturday afternoon. So definitely check that out. But the greatest thing is when he became the Mountie, he didn't actually use his real name because first and no, first, uh, Jacques, Jacques, and they went from the Rougeaus to the Mounties. There was a short-lived one. And then eventually Jacques came back as just the Mountie. But Ray Rougeau was an announcer. And Ray was interviewing him. And then the Mountie just kept talking about Brett and Owen and about how brothers don't always get along. And there's always <laughs> tension between brothers and Ray. It's just cracking up, right? But, uh, yeah. It's just cool, cool. There's, there's so many things, right? So I think on that we will leave it and we'll just uh, tell you to go and watch wrestling. It's, I mean, I definitely in this sort of time, it's something that takes you a little bit away from everything. It suspends the, the disbelief. It brings the imagination back a little bit. And just, I mean, you can so get caught up in it. It's unreal. Yeah, definitely. Aye. Can't, can't wait till we can... So you go in there. I was just about to say, I can't wait. We can all start traveling again, and we should all, you know, I should go over to there, and then the the five of us go to a show, and I think that would be just an absolute blast. And look forward That's to cool. that. Yeah, well, I'll come. We'll go to Mexico. Mexico. We'll go to a lucha underground. As oh, I filmed yeah, in I, Mexico. As a, <laughs> you do get, you'll get triple A in Mexico. Uh, you'll get. They actually they just had one of their big shows last weekend. Um, in Mexico, so that's yeah. But let's all just head to Mexico next week. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, just, just rent it, rent an RV, and we'll we'll go around uh, the world, North America, and just watch indie shows. Dude, that would be amazing, actually. And there's yeah. absolutely no denying that. I'd be I'd sign up for that in a heartbeat right now. I would love. I mean, Bola is the one thing that I would love to go to. That I think I, I'm not. I doubt I'll ever get a chance at Battle of Los Angeles PWG. That would be for me. That's 
one of the big ones that I'd love to, to go and watch. Very cool. Before we get into all of that again, thanks very much for your time this evening, gentlemen. Thank you all. Thanks for having us. It's been a good blast. It's been a good weather. We should do this once a week and not record it. <laughs> yeah, we should do. <laughs> Still Royal Rumble watch along. Right, definitely. <laughs> should be that as well. We will see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks, guys.